Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about the benefits of using T3 thyroid medication. And by T3 thyroid medication, what I'm referring to is lyothyronine, Cytomel, and sustain release T3. Okay, I'm, I'm not talking about um, T3 formulations of thyroid hormone like natural desiccated thyroid. I'm talking about pure T3 medication. Okay, so let's let's just jump right into the benefits. I'm not going to talk about who should use those or anything like that in this video. If you want to, if you want to um, get information on how to determine if you need it uh, per se or something along those lines, there are other videos that I've done that you can that uh, discuss that in detail. So let's jump into it. So number one, more weight loss. Okay, this is actually um, proven in studies. In fact, do I? I don't think I talk about the studies in this specific. Um, um, area here, but um, there have been studies which do this. They take patients who were on T4 medication, okay, and they take and they switch those patients to to an equivalent dose in terms and equivalency in this term in this uh, sense is um, used based off of um, how the thyroid hormone affects or alters the TSH. So if you if you were on T4 medication, your TSH was one, then they would they would put you on an equivalent dose of T3 to get your TSH to one. So that's what, how they use equivalent dosages. And I don't I don't think that's accurate, but this is the purpose of the study, right? They they took two groups of people two groups of people and they put them on T4 and they suppressed the T or they didn't suppress the TSH. They just made it normal. They put them on they put uh, those people on T3 and then they determined what happened. Did anything change? And it turned out that those people who who took the T3 even when they were on the T4 before when they switched them to the T3 with the exact same equivalent dosages. I'm using air quotes here, but you can't see it. Equivalent dosages. They lost more weight. They had less depression and they felt better. Okay. So that's just that. And th this isn't excessive dosages, right? So you got to consider that when it comes to TSH suppression, T3 is about three to four times more potent at suppressing the TSH than T4 is by itself. So if somebody was on hundred micrograms of T4, the equivalent dose of T3 would be somewhere probably around 20 to 25 micrograms, mm, you know, ish, right? This, this is loose math and each person's different, but let's just ish that, you know, so you can take someone who's on hundred mics of T4, put them on 25 mics of T3, have the same TSH and boom, those people lose a lot more weight. So yes, that, that definitely is an aspect um, that, that can occur. Now, some people will say, and I get this a lot, they'll say, well, I, I added T3 to my T4 and it didn't make any difference, right? Well, you have to add enough, okay? Um, first of all, you have to add enough. And second of all, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to make sure that the T4 isn't just necessarily working against you by just converting to reverse T3. So there's some nuances there. But the point is, T3 in general is going to provide more weight loss. Um, and a lot of that reason, well, actually, this goes right into number two. So we'll just talk about that. So why does it cause more weight loss? Um, this this is pro this is due to a number of different reasons, but I think probably one of the biggest reasons is that it influences your metabolism. Um, and this is number two here, higher basal metabolic rate. So why is that that why is that important? Actually, this is really 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 important if you have um, if you have hypothyroidism, and uh, we'll we'll talk about that. But um, your metabolism, if you didn't know, so let's just take a step back and talk about weight loss in general. If you it, hopefully you understand this. If you don't, well then you you're going to now. But when it comes to determining Number one, if you're going to lose weight, and number two, if you're going to keep that weight off, or presumably, let's say you lose weight, what you're interested in is keeping the weight off that you lost, right? Like that, that's the most important thing. So what you may not realize is that what determines if you're a going to lose weight and b if you do lose weight, keep it off, is your metabolism. Okay, and I want to make sure I say that again so you understand just how important it is. Your metabolism is responsible for the amount of weight that you lose, or I shouldn't say all of it. It's it's like eighty percent. Um, in terms of weight given, 80% of that weight is given to metabolism um, in terms of how effective it is for, uh, you are at losing weight. Okay, so it's huge, a huge portion of it. And the reason for that is because basal metabolic rate is, a, is in reference to your resting energy expenditure, which means how many calories you just burn at rest. Okay, and you might, you might, you might think, well, it doesn't matter because I can just simply exercise more and I'll burn more calories and then I'll lose weight anyway. Right. And that's what everyone thinks, but that's not true. And, and the reason is because you make the assumption that you're, that when you get on a treadmill and, or whatever, right, it doesn't matter. Let's say you go to Orange Theory and you um, are on a bike or whatever, you're doing their exercises and your heart rate's in the red zone or orange zone or whatever they call it. And they say, yeah, you just burned a thousand calories. And you're like, yeah, you feel pretty good. You're like, yeah, I definitely just burned a thousand calories. No, you didn't burn a thousand calories. If if the human body worked that way, you would not have any fat on your body. Okay, it, it doesn't. It, the the calculations that assume that you're burning X amount of calories are usually 
are, are, they usually get that number because they take into account a basal metabolic rate as what's influencing the majority of that cal caloric burn. So it's not like you're, t you're burning 800 calories in excess of what you were normally. No, it's like you would have burned probably 600 calories, no, more, probably even less than that. You probably would have burned 650, 700 calories anyway. And then in addition to that, you just burned a little bit of extra 100 calories. Like that, that's how it actually works. So the, the, what's more important in that equation in terms of weight loss even is how, what is your basal metabolic rate? Because that's going to influence the amount of, that you burn. Now you also have to consider on the flip side that your body's not dumb, um, meaning that your appetite your brain is going to your brain is doing two things number one it's it's setting the amount of it, it's telling your body that you're going to burn x amount of calories that's number one and then number two it's saying okay let's um let's say you know you are let's say you're a 35 year old woman right well, something like that you're a 35 year old woman and your brain's like you know we're going to burn 1800 calories per day and that's just what we're going to burn so what does your brain do it, it knows that that's how much you're going to burn so it says let's match her this person's appetite this 35 year old woman's appetite to the amount that she's burning right that's just how it works you're because you're, your body's not stupid if it was any higher or any lower then that would influence it so what we say is we say okay well someone's metabolism is 1800 so if i just eat you know a thousand calories per day then i'm going to lose weight over time and that does happen initially but again the body's not stupid so what it does is it says wait a minute she she's only eating a thousand calories per day I'm going to drop the metabolism to match that. And so it does. And so you stop losing weight and then you start eating again. But then guess what? Your metabolism stays low at 1,000 and then you go back up to eating 1,800. So guess what happens? You gain all the weight back plus more. So that's the problem with hypothyroid patients and, and that's why that's where T3 comes into this. T3 is influential in determining your basal metabolic rate because it has direct influence on mitochondrial function. And mitochondrial, your mitochondria in your body, are, it, these are the, um, the organelles inside your cells that are responsible for energy production. Okay, so and they do this by creating ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and ATP is um, kind of the the energy currency of the cell of your entire body, so to speak. It's required for muscle contraction. It's required to you know um, pump. Um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Electrolytes uh, against a gradient. It's required for all these things. So you need you have you have to have ATP to have nerve impulses to have um, uh, contraction of the myocytes in the heart, contraction of skeletal muscle, blah blah blah. Well, it's actually not contraction of skeletal muscle. It's actually relaxation. So I, I get it. I ho hopefully there's no um, physi physiatrists out there who are gonna correct me. I get it, but I'm just saying to make it easy. So the point is, um, T3 has a huge huge influence on um, metabolism by virtue of its effects on the mitochondrial function. Now, the, the other issue is that, or the other benefit, and the reason it helps a lot of, with weight loss is because most hypothyroid patients have caloric, or have metabolic damage because they've restricted their calories just like I told you to before. So how are you ever going to be able to lose weight if your, your, your metabolism is damaged by 40% or 30% of normal? It's just not gonna happen. So I use an example here, but I kind of already explained it, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, so that's uh, weight loss by virtue of its effects on metabolism, by virtue of its effects on energy production and heat production, and therefore, you know, how many calories you're burning at rest. That's number one and number two. Number three, another benefit. It has, um, it helps reduce hypothyroid symptoms, of course, right? That's the whole point of you taking thyroid medication is to reduce those symptoms. So if you're taking thyroid medication, so let, let's take a step back and say you've just been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, you're having hair loss, you're having weight gain, you have dry skin, you have constipation, uh, whatever. You have these symptoms of hypothyroidism, and so your doctor gives you a thyroid medication, right, to replace the deficiency that exists in your body. But then what happens? You still have dry hair. You're, you still have constipation. You still have weight gain. All these things occur. So why are you taking a medication if it didn't reverse the symptoms that the medication is – if your, your symptoms won't reverse and that's the point of taking the medication? It doesn't make any sense. So – and this is just simple. This is logic-based. I'm not like – I'm not trying to – to be uh, negative about this, but I'm just saying, if, if you're saying somebody has a problem and you try to fix that problem, hopefully whatever the solution you're providing does is enough to fix the problem. And in most cases of using T4 medication, it simply isn't, right? And so so then what's the answer? Well, we're either wrong about our, our what we think or how we think thyroid works in the body, um, or we just don't care, right? I don't know which one it is. So, But one, one thing I do know is that adding T3 does result in... Um, a higher chance of reducing those symptoms in certain people. Okay, so so yes, it does have a reduction in hypothyroid symptoms. Um, number four, and this actually goes along with numbers one and two, is that you have a high, high higher body temperature. Excuse me. So the higher body temperature is in part due to the effects that um, T3 has on mitochondrial energy production. Right. So when you think about think about it like this, the more energy that you're producing at rest, 
the more energy you have to burn. Okay. And, and when you burn energy, you get hot. So think about it in terms of, or your body temperature rises, right? You, you're releasing energy into the world, into the, to the universe. And as a result, your body temperature is, is normalized. So, so this is important for, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, those with lower than normal body temperatures, which, you know, usually are those people with hypothyroidism and or metabolic damage tend to have lower body temperatures and therefore tend to have slower metabolisms, right? They're burning less energy at rest. And it's felt to be um, some sort of compensatory mechanism that does this. And the, the logic is this, if you are in a state of starvation, your body doesn't want to keep burning too many calories, right? It, it does. It, it doesn't make sense. The body, like I said, the body's going to match your appetite to the amount that you burn. And so what your body says is, well, this person, you know, is in a state where food is presumably not plentiful, right? And so it says, let's reduce the amount that we're burning. Let's reduce, let's re reduce all of these things. Let's reduce metabolic function. Let's reduce the amount of energy that we're producing. Let's slow down the, the rate of the heart. Let's slow down conduction of the nerve fibers because the whole goal is to just take the efficiency of the entire system and just slow it down, crank it down 20, 30%. Okay, so now the question is what causes that to occur? What causes that to occur is caloric deprivation which is the exact same thing we do when we try and lose weight. High exercise, low diet, or you know, caloric restriction, boom, now you have this thing. So what T3 does is it increases the amount of energy that is produced, therefore it increases the amount of energy that is burned, therefore it increases body temperature. And again, it also it does this also by a number of reasons. It's not as simple to just say, oh yeah, you, you take it and you get you know, a bunch of, your body temperature increases, yada, yada, yada. Well, yes, that's true, but also, there's some nuances to it and a lot that we don't even understand, just so, just so you guys are perfectly aware. But one of the mechanisms that we know or by, the way that this occurs is is by virtue of T3's effects on brown fat. And brown, it basically, it, look, it, it turns out that T3 tends to activate brown fat and it's different from other sources of fat because brown fat is actually more closely involved in thermogenesis, meaning energy production in, in the body, in the, or heat production, I say not energy production, but it's done through, it's done through um, energy production. But brown fat basically increases metabolism and increases um, energy production. So T3 tends to um, activate brown fat is what I'm trying to say there. So a couple different ways that it does it. Bottom line is it does it. Uh, so here's another one. So another benefit number five is T3 basically improves other hormone imbalances. What, uh, how many more do we have here? Oh, good. Okay. So, cause this is worth spending a little bit of time on. So, um, first of all, and you guys probably already know this, but when, when your body's in a hypothyroid state, um, the having low thyroid also tends to affect other hormonal systems in the body. So because you have low thyroid hormones, you're going to develop other issues that need to be dealt with. Okay. So for instance, some of those might be low thyroid hormones associated with high, high cortisol, low thyroid hormones associated with low progesterone, low, low thyroid hormones associated with, or causes directly in some resistance, leptin resistance and low testosterone. So now we have five different things that all stem from the low thyroid hormone to begin with, right? Now, what's really, really, really important here is that just by giving you thyroid hormone, doesn't necessarily reverse those hormone imbalances unless we give you number one, sufficient amounts and number two, other therapies to take care of them. So what I'm trying to say here is if you're taking T4, well, let's just say you're taking T4, even NDT, right? Let's just say you're taking um, some sort of thyroid medication with the hopes that this will reverse whatever deficiency exists in your body because otherwise a doctor wouldn't prescribe you thyroid hormone if he didn't feel that you had some deficiency in your body. If you are still taking if you're taking this medication and it's not reversing those symptoms and therefore not helping with the deficiency, then you're still going to have these hormonal imbalances. So where does T3 come in? T3, if I provide you with T3, it's better at reducing the symptoms of hypothyroidism. It's better at sufficiently repleting the thyroid hormone that is needed cellularly, which has a downstream effect on affecting these other hormones, right? And that's how you can get so, so many benefits. So that actually went on longer than I thought it would, but um, that's kind of it in a nutshell um, in terms of the... I would say probably some of the biggest benefits. So, um, but anyway, I, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you're on T3, um, what kind of benefits did you experience? Some people have issues with it. I'll talk about side effects and, and such um, at a later time. But the point is just talking about the potential good things and, and why that is. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will try to get to your answers.